and uh, okay so let's continue then okay i'll yes, say it together one time okay yes sir okay done so we were discussing how how and uh, what is the importance of tolerance group right yes sir to have a group let's say end user accountants uh, role group wise we can have the amounts for posting and invoices right yes sir we can create them and we can assign to the individual user ids right login yes. ids <clears throat> that we have done now the next one is let's say document types and number ranges maybe we can do uh, free status variant first or whatever but let's see what is the document type and uh, what are the number ranges let's discuss okay yes sir so in a business what happens is uh, we post the uh, many uh, many variation of you know business transactions like we'll post vendor invoice yes do we post or not yes sir vendor invoice after posting a vendor invoice what we do we make a payment to vendor right yes sir so that we call it as a outgoing payment so to vendor right yes sir amount is going out so we call it as outgoing payment now we'll post customer invoice right yes sir and we'll pay uh, we'll receive amount from a customer right yes sir yes sir incoming payment to uh, from a customer right yes sir we buy asset right yes sir yes sir procure and uh, asset and we calculate depreciation right yes sir yes sir depreciation on asset right yes sir and firstly we have a general ledger postings also like rent data to cash wherever you have a gl account directly that we call general ledger postings but you will get a content very soon okay yes but sir see the point is it's not only all about a general ledger accounting it's not only about your accounts payable which is a vendor related or a customer related no there is a package complete package business in a sense we have a n number of transactions not only meant one right Other yes day? so yes there is a reason you have to understand how can we differentiate them let's say you you just think and also every invoice you post in a system you should have one voucher number right yes sir you refer, let's say you post one document how how the document is going to save in a database right yes sir system has to dedicate one document number right yes sir uh, so let's see why we need to have a different document type <coughs> i am posting daily n number of transactions as an accountant let's say i post first one document number maybe this is sa this is a document type the document type in a sense it defines and it clarifies you what kind of invoice you are posting in a system okay just you just see first we are sa only we are only using one document type in the document type we are posting all the transactions Let's say I post a post document number, maybe I give system thousand to nine hundred and nine. Uh, right. Okay, I'll give hundred thirty nine. Okay. Yes, sir. This is my interval. So with this range, how many documents I can post in a system? Nine ninety nine. Uh, nine ninety nine documents only I can post. If I if I think there will be an n number of postings more than nine ninety nine, then I have to increase my range. That's all. Now now I may how how many I can post nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine, right? Yes, sir. Business will uh, tell the range how they want to see, and uh, based on uh, their volume, they'll give the interval. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, now sir. you see. Uh, we, we are considering this range. I posted this document. Now system will give first document thousand, right? Yes, sir. This is a voucher number. You remember, or a document number we call it as. Then I post vendor invoice. It will give next number. 
likewise it will give the numbers right yes sir number done done if you see for any posting you see same document type and the same number do you think it's easy to identify for a content let's say he posted this many documents okay yes sir in these documents what is the incoming payment document from a customer where is the document number can you tell me what he has to do he has to go to the same document type there is no uh, separation right yes sir everything is in one place he has to go every document and he has to search for it finally he will find this is the document number 1004 which we have received a payment from a customer right yes sir <coughs> so is this easy or difficult difficult sir uh that is the reason dedicatedly the document type are delivered by the standard sap okay yes sir in real time what are the document types uh, sap is providing the same document types we use in a real time okay yes sir uh, for a, for a specific requirement maybe we create a new document types but definitely sap is delivering what all the document types sap is delivering that document types only we use in a real time okay yes sir now you see for a general ledger accounting this is a just to understand this is a confusing way right now you see how we define actually okay yes sir for general ledger we call it as a gl okay yes sir for gl the document type is sa what is it yes sir yes sir uh for sa we can give one number right like maybe 1999 okay yes sir then ap ap in a sense accounts payable got it yes sir in accounts payable we have a separation let's say what we have is we have a vendor invoice If we post vendor in my S, what is the document type we use? K R. What is it? K R. K R. So for this, I'll use a number range. This number range, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Pro sir. Outgoing payment, vendor payment. Let's say this is nothing but an outgoing payment. Okay. Yes, sir. Vendor payment K Z. Maybe I'll use three thousand two three nine nine nine. Got it? Yes, sir. This will give not nine, one. Not it? Yes, sir. Now let's go to the AR. AR in a sense what? Account receivable. Hmm. Accounts receivable. What we have? Customer invoice, right? Yes, sir. Customer invoice DR. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Customer. payment what is that dz now you are getting the sense right yes sir yes sir uh, now let's say asset accounting fa financial asset accounting or as asset account so asset acquisition right yes sir Acquisition. This is A A. Th these are the document types we use in a system, right? Yes. We don't need to define them. We just have to give a number range interval. This we call it as a range interval for a document. Likewise, system will post. Next, depreciation, right? Yes, sir. This is AF seven thousand two seven nine ninety. Now, if we post any general ledger entry, system will give this number, right? Yes, system sir. System would have given this number in our case. System would have given this number. Let's say I'll write here. Same here. There is no change. If I post vendor invoice, what will be the number it will give? Two thousand it will give, right? Yes, sir. 
Now, for outgoing payment, for vendor payment, what is the number it will give? 3,000. First, first invoice, right? Yes, sir. If you are making a, another vendor invoice, it will come 2,001. Another vendor payment, 3,001 it will cover, right? Yes, sir. Now, customer invoice, what is the document number it will come? Uma Devi. 4,000, sir. 4,000. Incoming uh, payment from a customer, what will be the document number? 5,000. I received one more payment. What will be the document number for a customer incoming payment? 5,001. Correct. Uh, now tell me, procure an asset, uh, asset acquisition. 6,000. Hmm. Post depreciation. Uh, 7,000, sir. Hmm. You see, this you have to remember. This, these are very important. Like, you have, how account types you have, right? We have seen yes. while you were defining a open and close period, we have account types. What are the account types? Can you tell me? A for assets. These customers. K for vendors. M for materials. S for GL accounts. V for contact accounts. Correct. How you are remembering them? So they are forever right in SAP. They are like that only. In ECC also like that only. In S4 HANA also like that only. Right? That is the SAP language. You have to remember always. Okay? Yes, sir. Likewise, likewise, yes, sir. likewise, document types are also same. You have to remember this document. Why, why we have to remember is SAP is de delivering them and everybody is using them only because it's easy to identify and do it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In your career, after you start a career, <coughs> if, if the uh, accountant say, I have a issue, issue with the document type KR. I have an issue with the document type KR or I have an issue with the vendor posting. If you say vendor posting in a sense, vendor invite, what could be the document type? You have to think KR, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have an issue with the depreciation posting. The document, uh, depreciation document was not posted correctly or I have some issue. Then you have to think depreciation. Depreciation, what is the standard document type? A F, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is the reason there are few more, maybe oh, four or five document types will add later. For now, you have to remember this, okay? Yes, sir. For your general ledger accounting, you have only yes, A, okay? But uh, uh, there is one more topic if I make any mistake, right? And yes, sir. Nobody is perfect in the world, right? Yes, sir. They might uh, come up with some mistake. So, how to rectify that? What will be the actual document number? What will be the correction document number? We need to see, right? Yes, sir. Uh, that when the topic comes, you will you will see more document types add on. Got it? Yes, sir. And one more thing you remember, the document types are the client level objects. What is it? Client level objects. Uh, types are client level objects. They are common for everyone. What is it? Every one. one. So we can use them and define our own number range. Uh, each legal legal entity means what? Company code. Company code wise. Okay. You remember document types SA, KR, KZ, DR, DZ. These are common for everybody. Common for everybody in a sense. Whatever a system I am using, development system, the do document types are pre delivered. SAP will deliver default. Okay. Yes, sir. You see, I am using SAM, you are using SAM. Uma Devi using same. Everybody. Who all working in this SAP system? For everybody, these document types are common. If you make any mistake, 
if you make any mistake or any correction on this document type, uh, it will impact everybody. Got it? Not yes. only you. If any any setting is impacting more than you, everybody in a client in the system. If it is happening, that we call it as a client level setting or a configuration or a object. Got it? Client level. What is a client we have? We have a client 400, right? The minute yes. you log on, in which client you are logging? 400. 400. Ah, 400. It means the document types are a client level. They are in a client. In this product, they are. You can use them. I can use them. Anybody can use them, right? Yes, sir. And yes, SAP is delivery. You no need to do it. But make sure whenever you are working or playing with a client level objects, make sure and think that I am doing a client level modification. If I do this, it will not only impact me, it will impact everybody. The problem will be more, right? When you are not sure and if you are doing some configuration, some correction in the system, if it is impacting you, that is limited uh, problem, right? Yes. It's only impacting you means the problem is limited. If you are touching everybody's objects, it will impact everybody's work, right? Yes. yes sir. That is the reason. Slowly you will understand, but client level object in a sense, it's at a client level. It has a more impact. While working with a client object, you should have a more cautious, okay? Yes, sir. It's not simply you go and do. If you do it in real time, it will impact everybody. Everybody will come and ask you, hey, why have you done this? Why have you done this? Okay? Yes, sir. Let's go and see. You will understand slowly. But that is a client level object. So, financial accounting. Financial sir, it is my username and password, sir. It's yes. not yours, sir. No, 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 no problem. That's what I'm telling. You should not have any confusion. So what is the IP address we are using? What is the IP address you are using? 9456, right? This is an IP yes, address sir. everybody is using, right? Yes, sir. This system only not meant for you. Not it. This yes, the sir. ID, the, the IP address in real time also. Nobody will give a one dedicated system for you, right? Yes, sir. In a client system, there are 100 people, 100 consultants, different modules. Everybody will work in the same system. That you have to understand the content. In the same client, with my user ID and password, I am doing my work. Got it? With yes, sir. your username and password, you are doing your work, right? But yes, all of us are doing in the same client and same system, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I will not access your data. I will access my data only. You see. Yes, sir. Everybody. I can see your data. You can see my data in real time. That understanding you should have. Otherwise, it's not uh, uh, knowing you the process correctly. So, system yes, is same. A4H only, right? Yes, sir. Where is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Let's go inside. Now you logged in. That is the reason I have logged out. Okay, don't log in. I will show you the content. Huh? I can change my username. I can log in. Don't log in now. You just listen here. Okay? <laughs> okay, sir. Ah, now you see. The system ID is common for everybody, right? A4H and 400 client only, right? Yes, yes, sir. Same, right? Yeah, real time also, same system. Everybody will use, but with a different username and password that you remember, right? I yes. have my username, yes, you have your username, password. But whatever data I process, it's in a system. Whatever you process, it will it'll be in the same system. If you want to see, let's go to enterprise structure. Definition, financial accounting, define company. What is the company you created? Uh, what is it? GMRC. What is it? I created you and co, sir. You and co. We have created, right? Where is our company code? That's what I am checking. Is it deleted or what? 
No, sir. It is a doesn't in Adindra late, sir. Uh, it will be there. I don't know why it was deleted. Maybe to while fixing that error, they would have deleted it. Let's see. What is your company called? You and Co, sir. You and Co. Is it? Is it this? A company code U003, zero zero sir. Zero company zero. name is U and Co. I don't see that, right? Maybe it is there, sir. Your company also removed. You just see, you only am typing. Where is it? Only I can see 18 entries only. That means all our data is gone. Yes, sir. While fixing that error, these guys have deleted everything. You just go back and validate. So far, what have you configured? If it is not there, quickly complete it. Okay? Okay, sir. I'll do uh, the class work uh, parallelly and I'll get till here quickly. Not an issue. Okay? okay now, sir. let's see the document types only. We'll concentrate today's topic. Assuming our configuration is exist. Okay? Uh, but make Step. sure at least our company code is there or not. If that is not there, this will also gone. One for uh, maybe here ninety. Mm -hmm. It's not there. US ninety. It's not there. Yeah. Gone. Sir, U zero zero three C sir. Your company code. U003. Uh, your company code is there. Company is gone. Okay. What is your company yes, code? Sir. sir, IN52, sir. Hmm, yours also there. Before I did, that data only gone. Uh, my data removed. I'll create quickly, not an issue. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go back to the topic. So, enterprise structure, no. Financial accounting. Financial accounting, global settings. Then document. You see here, document types. Define document types. Hmm. You see how many? 65 are there. If you see, mm -hmm. in our example, we have seen AA, asset posting, right? Yes, sir. And we have seen DR, customer invoice, right? Yes, sir. Uh, then the first one is general ledger accounting, SA. General ledger, uh, somebody has changed the name. Standard name, they have changed it. Like this, it will be GL account posting. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, document F and B range is used for ledger D1 type. Document type NB has some issue. Let's see what is that issue. Hmm. I just uh, corrected. Hmm. Now you see, this is a document type and importantly you should understand in each document type how, by if somebody asks me what all the settings you have in a document type, you have to remember the screen, you have to visualize how the visualization will come with your practice only, right? Yes sir. I explained you theory, I have shown you. Uh, okay, okay. Then later two days, if you forget this entirely, uh, how you, how should you remember the purpose of document types? And uh, you you don't remember, right? Yes, sir. By easily I can understand. If I ask her what all the configurations you have inside a document type, you will not tell me because you are not working, right? Yes, sir. That is more important to get a job. Everybody will uh, listen and uh, do today and tomorrow, not after a week, right? Yes, sir. We will write down uh, important notes and we will practice that way. 
they will understand, they will visualize and they will say, the answer you are telling, I can understand whether you are uh, reading and telling or whether you have worked on it. Okay? Yes, sir. So, first of all, you see here, nowhere you see a company code. Do you see? No, sir. Company codes are you created, right? That's yes. You. Yes, sir. But I told you, document type is not only for you. This is for everybody. You can use it for yourself. That's all. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, you, uh, these fields we will discuss again and again we have to come here. But now you see number range information, right? Yes, sir. You can add a number range for your company code as you wish. As my company code is not there. Not there, I cannot use it. Maybe I'll use one dummy company code. Uh, 0001. Let's see whether uh, somebody has already maintained. Mango. Uh, this is a company code. You just assume this is not our company code. This is 0009. Got it? Yes, sir. In 0009, if you want to use a document type ASA or any document type, first what we have to do is under your company code, you have to give the number range interval. What do we have to give? Number range interval. Like this. If I want to use SA document type, what is the number range interval? 1,999. For a KR, 2,000 and 299. Like this, at least one number range interval you have to give. If you assign this interval, when you post any particular document type in your company code, system give this document number for you got it yes sir and next you can have one more question so the document types are we are not meant for any company code right these are client level objects right yes sir but the number range interval is a company code specific what is it company code specific. it means every company code has the number range interval as for their choice. There is no mandate. Everybody has to use this unless you have a requirement from a client. Your client say, I have a hundred company codes. For hundred company codes, I want to see the same number range interval. It means for SA in all the company code give the same ranges. For all other document types also, give the same number range interval for all the company codes. So that in a uniform way, every company code has the same number range interval, right? Yes, sir. But if needed, you should understand the concept. If needed, here you can have a deviation at a company code level. Let's say, for now we are seeing 0009 company code, right? Let's say this is for a 0009 company code. What is it? 0009. Got it? Yes, sir. 0009, you can define like this. If I go here, make sure I am adding the interval for what? SA document type, right? Yes, sir. In a document type, before you add an interval, number range interval, you have to consider the number range. What is it? Number range. And also we call it as a number range sequence. What is it? It's an identifier. Number range sequence. You see here, the minute I go number range, I give a company code. This is to display. So far, how you define the number ranges to see this? It's a nothing, right? It's a blank. Yes. Now just go back, click on middle button. This is a change. Pencil is there, no editor. Change interval. First, what it is asking, number range, number, right? Yes, sir. This is the identifier. Where we have this? In a document type, you have, right? Yes, sir. What was the number range sequence, Uma Devi here? Hello? Are you there? Sir, I went for water, sir. No one like game, sir. Uh, that's what I asked. Okay. It should be constant. Oh, what will be the number and sequence here? Uh, uh, 1000. No, that is the interval. 1000. 
1998. So you missed the important piece. Okay. In the document type, you have a number range, sequence or a range we call it as. This is a link. In a document type, we don't see anything related to company code. But while you are defining a number range, your number range, you have to give your company code. Click on edit pencil. Now you have to define a number range sequence. In this case, what will be the number range sequence? Anandika? 2 sir. 0, 2. You have to tell the full name. Otherwise, system won't read. Okay? Yes sir. For 0, 2 number range sequence, for which physical year you are defining? I am defining it for a 2022. We are still in a 2022 as per Indian company code, right? Assuming 0009 is the Indian company code. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As for our example, I can give a number range interval like this, right? Yes, sir. Now, when our system is posting in this 0009 company code, system will read for this financial year, 1000 to 1999 while posting a SA document type. Got it? Yes, sir. I'm just saving it. The configuration what I made, I'm saving. But make sure I'm not saving. System is not saving in a transport request. What it is telling, can you read it for me and uh, tell me? Madhavi? The intervals are not included in automatic recording of customizing changes. Transports of all the changes made when editing interval must be triggered manually. To do this, choose the function interval transport in interval editing. Note the information displayed when you transport the intervals. Hmm. So the min actually, whenever you do a configuration, the minute you click on a save, your transport number will come. Otherwise, you can create a transport request and you can save it, right? Yes, yes, sir. No? yes sir. Now it's not populating, right? Yes, sir. Normally, what we do is number ranges will not transport in a real time. Why? Because whatever ranges we are giving here, right? 1999. If you add them in a transport request and if you move to the quality system, later obviously you have to move to quality system, right? Yes, sir. Once yes, testing is done, we'll move to the production system, right? Yes, sir. Uh, there will be an inconsistency with the number ranges. There is a common problem will occur with the intervals. That is the reason we don't transport them. In, in a sense, we don't include them in a transport request and move. We'll go in a, every system and we'll add manually. Likewise, how I am adding number range interval? After you know, full con configuration is done, in quality system also I'll log in and I'll add a number ranges manually. Once testing is done, ready to move to the production. In the production also, I'll go directly manually and I'll add the number ranges. Okay? Yes, sir. Why we add that? There is a number range, uh, the, there is an inconsistency will happen. That is the reason most of the uh, implementation projects don't consider saving the number range intervals in a transport request. Okay? If at all, if at all, there is a possibility still. If you want to add Whatever changes you are doing, whatever configuration you are adding for the number ranges, you can add and a transport request. But the process you have to follow, first you have to click on interval here. You see, there is a button here, interval. And you click on transport in an interval editing. Then you add the transport request. It will ask. If you want to do it, just click on OK. Now what we do is, we will go, to, we'll select it. We will go to interval. You see it. Transport. Yes. Do you want to transport it? This is what it is telling. There could be some issue. Still, you want to use a transport request. It is asking, right? Yes, sir. But if you if you say finally yes, I want to use it. See, now it is asking a transport request, right? Yes, sir. This is creation of FOMA enterprise. So I am not touching your transport request. I am creating a new one. So class. Maybe class transport, okay? Yes, sir. Just okay. save. In this, my my changes are saved now. Number range also saved. Normally, it will not go for a transport request. Still, if you want, you can select that. You can go to interval menu. 
you can add a transport and you can save it so that your number range changes will be saved in a transport request. Normally, how we do it, we'll do individually in all the systems, right? Yes, sir. That you have to remember anyway, I'll tell may, maybe more than 10 times, but you have to remember when I ask, if you say, I'll be happy, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you got it. For the 0009 company code, we have assigned the number range sequence related to SA document type. But we don't have only SA. We have vendor invoice. We have to post vendor invoice also, right? KR. Yeah. So let's go into the KR. Double click on KR. Now see, for this, what is the number range sequence we have here, Uma Devi? 19, sir. 19. So if you want to use KR document type in your company code, just go to number range information, 0009. If you go display, now you can see one entry, one row you can see. You see, this already we made it. Now, add one more, click on into web, and uh, plus, insert a line. Ah, now tell me, what is the number range sequence I need to add here? 19, sir. Correct. 19. 19 means, it is related to KR document type. 02 means, it is to your SA document type. That is how the logic works, okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, 2022. You say 2022. What is the number range you want to give for KR? 2000 to 2999, right? Yes, sir. 2000 2999. Got it. Likewise, you can see it easy. You can do it if you want to transport it. Again, select interval, transport, Yes, the same transport I want to use. Save it. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. likewise, you can go to the other document types also and you can, based on a number range sequence, you can add into your company code interval, right? Yes, sir. Now, let's go back to SA only. Now, let's see. It's not mandatory that you mm. have to use the same. Now, I am coming again, SA, number range information. This time, I want to give, I want to assign a number range for different company code. There is a one, triple zero eight. Previously, we done for triple zero nine company code, right? Yes, sir. This is triple zero eight. Let's see any interval. So, thank, thankfully, no entries this guy made. Now, you see, I'm adding, I'm adding triple zero eight. Assume triple zero eight company code is a US company code. If it is a US company code, we are in a which financial year? Calendar year. Ah, 23. 23, right? Yes. Our calendar year and fiscal year is same. <coughs> now you tell me, I have to define a number range for 0008 company code. Now tell me what I have to give a number range sequence here. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, I came back. Number in sequence is what? 0, 02 only, right? Yes, sir. Triple zero eight. Now tell me what is the number in sequence I need to give? 02. Ah, zero 02. Next. 2023. 20, 20, 20, 20, ah. In this company code, this guy wants to use only three digits, not a four digit. Ten thousand you don't want. You want only three digits, maybe hundred to 999. You can use it. Inside of your company code, how you want to give the interval, that is up to you. Okay? Yes, sir. But you have to use the same number range sequence from a document type. Then only it will work for you. From here, this is your choice. Based on your company code, you can have anything here, right? Yes, but sir. They should be mandatorily from your document type. With this, this guy 0008 in a physical year 2023, he can use this number range interval. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, likewise, if you want to add, what is it? Enter uh, document type. 19, we have to add 2023 and another number range interval. Whatever you are given, you should not use uh, again. If you do it, it will give you an error. Let's do it. What is the other one? 19, right? For KR? Sir, 19. 19, 2023. 
See, I'm giving again. Two hundred. I'm giving again same. See, it's giving an error. What does it mean? Interval nineteen. Sub object zero eight two here twenty two overlaps with the interval zero two. Got it? Yes, sir. Whatever you are trying for a nineteen already used for zero two. You cannot overlap them, right? Yes, sir. Ah, now tell me what what number range we can do here? Two hundred to two ninety nine, sir. Two hundred already here consumed, na? Thousand two. Ah. Here you have to give a thousand. Next number is what? Thousand, right? Yes, sir. Till nine nine consumed. So you have to give here maybe as for your choice. Thousand to fifteen hundred. I am giving. Got it? No, yes. It is the same. Changes for done. Got it? Yes, sir. Now you understand the concept. Number range sequence is a base. And document types are a client specific. Standard document types only we use. But against the number range sequence, in your company course, that is your choice. Based on the physical year, you can give whatever you want. Got it? Yes, sir. And also there are few fields we'll have to discuss. Again, we'll come when we post a post document. We'll come and discuss what is this NR status. What is this X null button? And here, every physical area you have to maintain this number range, right? If this is the case, yes, sir. Twenty twenty two you maintain. After twenty twenty two, what twenty twenty three physical area will come, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Twenty three you have to add, right? Yes, sir. So if you don't want to add every physical area separately, every physical area, then there is an option you can do like this zero two. Nine nine nine, and maybe you can give ten thousand, nineteen thousand nine nine. Cut it. Yes. This call it as a non-year specific interval. If you add like this, until this interval is exhausted, you no need to add a number ranges every physical year. Cut it. Yes, sir. Unless you see here, you added against your physical year twenty twenty two. It means this activity will repeat every physical year. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, Sometimes sir. business say, "Hey, what is a headache? We don't want to do it year on year. We'll give a big number and give a non-year specific. Once that interval exhaust uh, is complete, then we'll add the new number range. Okay? If they say like that, <clears throat> based on their choice, we can give it, right? Yes, sir. But yes, sir. Understand. But you should understand what is a uh, physical year specific number range maintenance and what is a non physical year uh, number range maintenance, right? Nine nine. If you give it till you no need to do it for uh, every physical year. It will read until this interval exists. Okay. Yes. If year specific, whether this is completed or not, it doesn't matter. At the end of a physical year, you have to add one more line like this: zero two. Twenty twenty three next physical year again same interval you want to use you can use it no issue save it got it yes sir so that is the difference between your physical year specific and non year specific we'll do exercise uh, when we post the documents with this okay yes sir now you got it what is the document types and differentiate your business transaction. And inside, in a company code wise, we can define a number range intervals. In real time, all company codes among all company codes, they want to use the same number range interval. Got it? Yes, sir. If at all, if there is a discussion, hey, we don't want to use the same. Let's say we use it for triple zero nine. For triple zero eight, we have not used this, right? We use it different. Uh, maybe hundred nine nine we use right? Yes sir. Ah, uh, for this also we have not used the same. Maybe we use a different. What we have used thousand to fifteen hundred, right? Yes sir. Right. So there is a difference in a company code level. You can have your own choice intervals, but 
in a real time you have a unique unique in a sense for indian company code you give the same intervals for a us company code also you give the same intervals but if somebody asks you can we have a different yes we can have it that answer you should know that is the reason i told you this example got it yes sir hmm. now we are done with the document types and number ranges what is the next thing ah field status variant okay let's say if you are posting any invoice there are couple of fields right fields are in a sense data input things let's say i am going to post one invoice you see there is a document date posting date these all are what input parameters right yes sir and uh, if i go in say let's go in say 2023 Not sure which company code is using. Let's try it with zero one. I'm filling every details, right? Fields. Yes, sir. I'm not sure this guy has anything. Uh, no, this not. One second. You no need to concentrate. What I'm doing, you'll understand deeper. But. Uh, I want to show you the few more fields. Maybe this side. Okay, direct post. This is understood. Let me select one more GL account. Uh, maybe advances. Let's see. This guy created in a euro. This is not our company code, so we don't know what exactly he has done. So randomly we are picking something to post. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, where is it? I don't want. Ah, uh, some employer expenses made it. Okay, in euro only it is allowing. Let's remove this. His company code is euro. We'll post one more time. This time we'll give the currency, not a INR. We'll give euro. Hmm. You see, there is a field. How much invoice you are posting? What is the amount? What is the business area? Where exactly mm -hmm. this transaction is happening? Got it? Yes, sir. And, uh, the text. While posting any invoice, you will add the text, right? Uh, what, what, uh, for what this transaction is happening? Maybe el electricity expenses or employee salaries or employee stationery, employee admin expenses. Anything. What is it related to? You have to write a narration, right? Yes, sir. Call it as a narration. Narration in sense. There's a purpose being posting the transaction, right? Yes, sir. He, he, you have a some fields. Maybe if you count three, four, five, six, seven, maybe close to uh, 15, uh, ten to fifteen in between, you have a boxes, right? Yes, sir. These all are called fields. Fields in a invoice posting. When you post a vendor invoice, when you post a general ledger invoice, when you post a uh, vendor payment. All, all this kind of you know business transactions. When you post this kind of transactions, you have a different screens. In a screens, you have a different different fields to input, right? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, let's say standard SAP is delivering. Maybe in every transaction there are two sides. What are they? Every transaction there are two sides. What are they? Let's say simple example rent. Rent account, data to cash account, right? Yes, sir. And every transaction you have a debit and credit, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Debit and credit. So your debit must be equals to credit. How many credits you have, it doesn't matter. But how many debits or credits you have in one transaction doesn't matter. But obviously, both should be equal, right? Yes, sir. It means rent if it is thousand, cash it should be. Five thousand, five hundred, five hundred. If you have a two separate lines, you can have it. But ultimately, your debit and credit should be equal. That's what my point. Got it? Yes, sir. Ah, huh. 
you have a debit side and you have a credit side here you have a 70 fields to fill here you have a 70 fields to fill got it 70 fields in a sense debit side when you go uh, account you have a 70 fields to fill and again you have to give a credit GL account next line item and you have to fill a again right yes sir so yes. if you allow the user 70 fields in a screen he would be confusing what to enter what to not enter right yes sir and also he don't know whether uh, this field is important or uh, this field is not important he don't know right yes sir uh, so and also if you give a 70 fields obviously he'll get a confused big screen he'll see big boxes he'll see right yes sir uh, so it's very confusing that is the reason that is the reason we can control the fields we can control the fields which fields can be visible to the user which fields user can see in his screen like this right yes sir. With all the fields which are disappeared which are to be disappeared which are not supposed to be displayed here okay yes sir and which are to be displayed and mandatorily we had to enter the data the first thing is which are to be displayed second thing is which are not to be displayed the third thing is which are to be displayed and mandatorily he have to enter the data it means if i made this text is a mandatory field if i am saying system this is a mandatory if the user forget to add details here it won't allow you to do next screen it will not allow you to go to the next screen got it yes sir so do you think we need to have this control or uh, it's okay we can populate a 70 fields and let him post whatever he wants? No sir, it is important to have the control. What yes. about you Umadevi? Yes sir, I will agree with her sir. You have to agree with the business process also, right? So that is the reason how you can control the fields is with the field status variant. In the field status variant, you have a field status groups okay now it's not uh, easy to you know uh, consolidate in a few minutes and i cannot feed you in your brain let's take a pause here okay so today we have covered five minutes topic in one hour got it this is yes. this is just a five minutes just go define and add a number in. that's all we do but we spent a quality of time here but definitely i'll ask you tomorrow what topic I'll ask, I don't know, but definitely I'll ask, be prepared and come. And also go back and check your uh, previous configuration. If anything is deleted, come updated by tomorrow. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, sir.